you like JDAM's worth of knowledge drop danger close into your brain, go ahead and scroll down and make sure that, you, that you're subscribed. If you're not, subscribe. If you are subscribed already or you just click subscribe, make sure that you hit the little alert notification button. That way when I drop this knowledge, you can go ahead and get it. Also, make sure that you like and comment if either you've liked my previous videos videos, or you're a Marine who likes crayons. Either way is going to get a like. For comments, comment something constructive or if you have nothing to say, comment with whatever you'd like. We have a weird community. Now, people ask me, why do you want likes and comments? Well, YouTube likes that because when I get those likes and comments, they promote me. I get more advice, more help, and then my videos are promoted more. As we get bigger, we can uh, inundate the world with our weird beliefs. So, with that being said, we're going to be going into more skill sets with this video. So, gear is cool. You should have good gear, but without the skills to back it up, it's pretty useless. So, today we're going to be working cadence and target transition. And we're going to be doing that through what's called the collateral drill. So the collateral drill is from the movie Collateral starring Tom Cruise. So hot. Tom Cruise. And it takes place in an alley. And uh, somebody stole Tom Cruise's briefcase or his character's briefcase. As he approaches the characters, they approach him, approach him at close range. And he engages both targets. Two to the chest on target A. Then two to the chest on target B. And then one to the head. So we're essentially going to do this drill, but a little bit modified to work a couple principles. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two targets. You're going to set them up between two or five yards away from you. And the targets are going to be spaced seven yards apart. Make sure that they're angled towards you. That way you're not shooting at weird angles. We'll talk more about shooting at weird angles, but not for this drill right now. Now for the two yard drill, you're going to start hands off your weapon or in a relaxed position. Me personally, if I'm just walking around with my gun, I typically just have my hand on the pistol grip, just resting, my left hand kind of doing whatever in a pocket or whatever. So that's how I start that drill at the two yard line. With my pistol, I start with the pistol holstered and then I have to draw it, all that type of stuff. From the five yard line, I start at the low ready as if I was ready for this engagement. And with the pistol, I either start with it at low ready or holstered. So how this drill is going to run is on buzzer, you're going to fire two shots into target A within a two inch grouping, transition over to target B, two shots into the A zone, two inch grouping, and then one to the head. And that's going to apply for both the two yard line and the five yard line. So time standards for the two yard line with rifle, starting from just hands off, you wanna make sure that you're somewhere under two seconds. From the time that gun goes off, you should be under a second for those five shots. Now, starting out, let's go ahead and let's stay under four seconds and start working yourself down to that two second mark. For the pistol, have a total time standard of five seconds. We wanna get that down to sub three second if possible. So what's going to work for us is make sure that work that draw, that we're mechanically efficient and that type of thing. And so that will be for the two yard drill. At the five yard line, you will start at low ready with your sights aiming at the feet of the target. And then on buzzer, you will deliver two shots to the chest, transition over two shots to the chest, one to the head on target B. Pistol, start with pistol at low ready and do the same drill. Now, a couple things to talk about is A, target transition. So there's gonna be a target transition guys as you're going from A to B. What's going to be important there is that you don't overdrive the target. A lot of people have a tendency to rotate their body, their entire trunk, and just keep their eyes locked with the red dot. And it definitely works, but it presents some problems. A lot of people have the tendency to overdrive the target. For example, if you, the camera, are my target, I typically have a tendency to come over it if I was driving straight over, and then I have to recorrect and bring myself back. Now, in the grand scheme of things, is that really a big deal? No, it maybe adds a couple milliseconds, but it could possibly be the difference between life or death, depending on the situation. So when I'm doing target transitions, I prefer to look at the target and then drive my weapon onto it. That helps me from overdriving the target. Now there are many different ways to do this, but that's just the way I do it. Now if you're a seasoned shooter and you put a couple thousand rounds doing target transitions the way you do them, then and they work for you, you don't have to try it this way. If you have less than a couple thousand rounds, you haven't done a whole lot of target transitions, give my, my, uh, give my method a shot, see how it works for you. So when it comes to transitions as well, when we're driving ourselves over, it's going to be important that we drive our hips with us. I like to have my hips aimed towards the target. It helps me shoot better and control the recoil. And sure, you can control recoil on one foot, standing, you know, doing some weird thing. I've seen a lot of trick shooters do it. But the point is, is if you have a good stable base, you're gonna shoot better. So I prefer to have my hips 
aimed at that target. It also squares up my body armor. I know there's a lot of controversy around that, but it works for me. So when you're transitioning over, make sure you swing with your hips too. Got to make sure you got it in the hips. If you don't have it in the hips, literally nothing is worth it at that point. So another thing to work on with transition. When it comes to cadence, the only breaking cadence should be when we're transitioning between target A and B, that seven yard gap. Now that's going to be especially apparent when we're working at the two yard line. Five yard line will be less apparent. So when you're shooting on target B, you're gonna be delivering three shots. One of those shots is gonna be on the head. So there has to be a transition between the A zone of the chest to the A zone of the head. There should be almost no gap between shot two and three as far as cadence between one, two, and three when you're firing. So you need to be quick enough on your weapon that when you're hitting that target two, when you're firing your first second, that you're bringing that weapon up quick enough to the point where you're not gonna have that gap. So that's what we're looking for in cadence. So I hope you guys take the opportunities to try this drill out a little bit. Um, last time, I think only two people tagged me on Instaho for trying this drill out. It was pretty cool when they did. So feel free to tag me on Instagram. Um, you know, when you're doing the drill, make sure you look cool doing it. I'll be at grand underscore thumb and we can share a bunch of Instaho pictures. It'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you guys. Um, quick note for my Marines, you guys can stop looking the screen. I'm sorry I took so long to tell you guys. I'm excited to see you too, but um, I'm not real. Well, I mean, I'm real, but I'm, I'm on the screen. I'm on the computer screen. So, but I love you guys a lot. So I'm happy for the enthusiasm. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to have more gear stuff coming up in the next couple weeks. I just wanted to take a quick hiatus and do a couple videos on skill sets because um, I feel like there's a lot of momentum behind them right now. So tag me. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, that type of thing. And no matter what, look cool doing this drill. Because if you don't look cool and you don't drive your hips and move your hips, what else is there to life?